Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you how you can set up your main menu in a way that it's going to work for, you know, gamepads or keyboards. Now, as of right now, we've just set it up in a way that it works for our mouse. You know, we've got these buttons and you simply just click them. But what we want to do is, you know, if you're targeting other platforms, um, such as, you know, Xbox, PlayStation 4, or, you know, one way you're not going to be using a mouse, you're going to want to be able to scroll through these buttons using buttons on the gamepad or the keyboard. So if you take a quick look at the game that I've got here at the moment, if you don't know how I created all of this stuff, uh, the current main menu that I've got, go ahead and check out the past three videos and you can, and you can figure out exactly how I did that step by step. But if I go up and down on my keyboard, you can see here I can scroll between the buttons. And then if I was to press enter, I could go ahead and press that button. So quick game, press enter. And I'm not touching that with the keyboard at all at the moment. It's going up and down with the buttons. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be with the keyboard for this. It could be the gamepad. So you could be using up and down on the D-pad. Or you could be using the analog sticks or whatever you want, really. But what I'm going to be showing you today is exactly how you can do this. Now, most of you, um, or before you've even tried this, you might think it's pretty simple to go ahead and work with inputs for this. But unfortunately, with Blueprint widgets, you can't actually just fire off an event uh, or, you know, functions after you press an input key. The way to do it is slightly more complex. And this is my code for this very simple little menu system that I've got. So the way that we're going to do it, instead of just, uh, you know, right clicking input and then, you know, the thingy, uh, you want the thingy, but you know, the input key and then just firing off the functions. You can't do that in here because if I was to go right click and go to input, wherever that is, input, I don't have all of the keyboard and the gamepad options. The only way we can really do that is to, the only way we can really do this inside of here is to check whether or not an input key is down. So what we're going to be doing is we're essentially going to be using the event tick and we're just going to be checking a few things. We're going to check whether the key is down and that's all done through the branch node. And if it is, it's going to do something else. It's going to go ahead and set the key position up or down. And then we're essentially just going to change the buttons, uh, you know, how it looks based on that key position. That key position is essentially just a little variable at the moment. And, you know, it's going to be switching it based on that. So if it's zero, the key position is going to be to start game. One is going to be options and two is going to be, um, you know, quick game. The reason for that being because we've got three little options here. Start game, options and quick game. Three key positions. That's all we've got. And that's all we really need to work through. So hopefully you've got a basic understanding of how this is actually going to go down. We can actually begin creating this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything. And I'm going to show you how to create this whole system step by step. It's very simple, um, but it is quite a lengthy process. So I'm probably going to have to break it down into two different videos. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make sure we've got a menu still. It's all working. I can work with it however I want. Start game, quit game. And try and make sure you've got your blueprint uh, widget open with all the old scripts for all the buttons so we can actually use that at a later point. Okay, so to start with, let's go ahead and use the event tick. This is what we're going to be, is what all of our scripts are going to be based around. Basically, every tick or every frame, it's going to check whether or not, um, you know, a condition is true. That condition, in our case, is going to be whether or not the button is down not pressed, just whether or not it's held down. So to do that, let's go ahead and show you how we can do it. If it was to right click and then get a reference to the player controller, the player controller is essentially what, uh, you know, holds all of this information, get player controller. Uh, this is what controls all of this stuff. So from here, if we go to return value, what we could do is type in is input key down and we can select a key and then we can use this for conditioning. So if we wanted to, we could hook this up into a branch. So let's go ahead and do that. So from event tick, I'm going to drag out a sequence node. The reason for this is because every frame, I'm going to want it to do a few things. Most importantly, I'm going to want it to check whether or not two different types of keys are down. 
So one for going up in the menu and one for going down in the menu. And then I'm also going to have another one to actually check whether or not, uh, you know, the action key. For example, if you're working with an Xbox One controller, the A key would be the enter key. Or, and then you'd have your up and your down and all that stuff. So I'm going to make sure I've got three pins in the sequence. So it does the first check, the second check, and then the third check. So from here, let's go ahead and do two things. So like I said before, we want to do two different checks. We're going to be com uh, so we're pretty much going to be duplicating the first two checks. Let's go ahead and show you how we can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a little delay. Delay, there you go. And the reason for this delay is because we don't want it to just run straight through because it's going to be checking every frame. We don't want it to be like that. We just want it to check every second. Um, once we've actually completed this system and you change it to something and you just get rid of a delay, you'll understand exactly why we're doing it. But for now, I'm just going to add in a delay of 0 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to hook this up into the sequence for 1, uh, for 0 and 2. From here, now we actually need to set up the branching stuff. So type in branch and add that in. And we're going to use two of these. And for the condition for these two branches here, we need to use this is input key down stuff. So the first one, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate these. So control C, control V, just chuck those in there now. So the first one I'm going to do is keyboard. Because I don't actually have a gamepad with me right now, or you probably might not as well, I'm just going to go ahead and use the keyboard stuff. I'm just going to use the arrow keys. So I'm going to use up and down. And then I'm going to go ahead and hook these up into the conditions just like this. So now, if I go ahead and press, uh, you know, type in print string, we can actually see whether or not this is actually going to work. So let's just go ahead and set this up to true. So basically, whenever it's down, and it, it's done, it's run its check, it's going to tell us whether it's true or false. So I'm going to type in down, and then I'm also going to set this to up. And I'm going to go ahead and press compile, press play, and see what happens. If I press up, you can see up is coming up, and then down is coming down when I press the down key. So that's the basics of actually, you know, receiving imports, uh, inputs from the keyboard, or the, uh, you know, the gamepad from inside your menu widget. And then from here, we can actually go ahead and add all of the cool functionality. So let's go ahead and do some basic stuff. So the first thing we're going to need to do then is create a variable, which is going to hold the key position. So with our main menu, we've got three different options. We've got start game, options, and then you've got quick game. So we're going to be wanting to go on from the key position from zero to two. Now, the reason it isn't one to three is because with uh, you know computers, they usually go, f they start from zero and it counts that zero as a number. So we're gonna have to start from zero to two instead. So go ahead and create a new variable and we're gonna call this key position. Sorry, there you go, key. There you go, key position new. The reason I couldn't do it before is because I've got one already. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this uh, variable is actually an integer. That way it's going to be a number. If you haven't actually checked out, you know, the different variable types, I do advise you go ahead and do so. But for now, an integer is going to work. So it's going to allow us to work with whole numbers and go to, you know, whatever we need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get a reference to this. And this is what the whole system is built around. It's, you know, it's going to be changing the states of these objects, not the states, but the style of these objects based on the key, uh, key position. And then when you press enter, it's also then going to go on and uh, it's going to go on and, you know, do the action based on the, you know, the key position. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and well end the video here anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and make another video on showing you how you can actually change all of the buttons based on you know, these inputs. So hopefully by the end of this tutorial now, you should have a basic understanding of how we can actually, ch uh, you know, receive inputs from keyboards, gamepads, or anything like that, and get it into your main menu. So that, like I said, the next step is simply just going to be changing the style and then adding in those simple little actions. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.